The Hooke's Law apparatus allows students to investigate the relationship between the force on a spring and the elongation of that spring, the elastic spring constant, and equilibrium of forces. The apparatus comes ready to assemble and includes a mirrored scale to make measurements much easier and more accurate, a spring, a pointer that has a slot to attach slotted masses to, and a support stand as well as an activity guide. The only additional materials that you need to provide are slotted masses or some type of weight to hang from the slotted mass hanger. The shiny mirrored surface makes reading the exact position of the pointer very easy and since it is not permanently mounted to the support stand you can slide this up and down to set the equilibrium position to any point that you want to. When investigating Hooke's Law, it's important to always measure from the equilibrium position. This is the position in which the spring naturally hangs from. As you add more force, the distance increases, and if you were to look at the graph of force versus distance, the slope will give you a representation of the spring constant, which is in newtons per meter. This is going to be constant for a spring. Another experiment that you can do with the Hooke's Law apparatus is to investigate work. When you look at the formula for work, which is force times distance, you might think that this is the same force and distance. However, if you look at the graph of what's going on, you can see that the force is not the same, so you actually have to take half of the force times distance in order to get the actual work in stretching a spring. And on the little graph over here, you can see that's actually just the area underneath that slope. The Hooke's Law apparatus is a simple and elegant way for students to investigate equilibrium of forces, Hooke's Law, and the effect of force moving a spring. Now, one thing you do need to be careful of when you are doing this experiment, and I'm hiding it in my hands because I accidentally did it, do not go beyond the elastic limit of your spring, so do not use more force than what the spring will allow you to move because then the spring will not go back to normal and then you just ruin the experiment for the next class. So please do not go any farther than what the spring scale allows you to go or else you'll end up with this.